Good morning. Welcome to the community update for Thursday, May 7th. What a great morning today. Sorry for running a couple minutes late. Had a little bit of technical problem. Couldn't get my camera to start. So I'd really like to just jump right in with our community positives and our successes here from uh, from Whitehall Elementary School Library. And I really want to talk a, a little bit about that here just in a minute. But starting out with our successes, it is Nas National Teachers Appreciation Week. We're celebrated between May 4th and the May, May 8th. So last night at the school board, uh, we did have the board uh, pass a resolution, a proclamation, really celebrating teachers and educators uh, because teachers aren't just, our educators aren't just teachers. Educators are our teachers, our paraprofessionals, our administrators, our support staff, folks working on the front lines with, with children, even though those front lines look differently now. Uh, our teachers and our, our folks who influence the lives of, of kids are really doing a fantastic job. And so uh, the first piece is really to, to share that proclamation that'll be attached uh, to the board, uh, I'm sorry, to the website. Uh, I'm not going to read it here today, uh, but really a wonderful opportunity to, to share uh, our appreciation for all of our teachers this week. The second, and this link will be on the, the agenda, the board, the, the notes from this meeting, but I have a link for you. And, I, and while I can't share the screen, I would show it to you now, but a video of thanks. And this video was put together uh, in the fall with, with footage when we were in the buildings and just thanking the teachers for what they do. And it's really great to watch because, uh, of course, what we're used to, kids in seats, in school, uh, talking with each other, um, it, it makes us really yearn and crave what, what is to come. And if we do all this right with our with our social distancing now, we will be back to those days sooner, uh, sooner than later. Uh, so please, uh, when you see the link, click on there. It's about five minutes in length. And really, is, it's great to watch. It's great to see the kids' faces and see their excitement. Uh, our positive shout-out uh, comes from Misty uh, Wodowitz. Of course, I'm pronouncing that name incorrectly, but I know Missy W. Um, and, and she writes, hello again. I really want you to know how important this online school is to our family. It is helping so much in this craziness. I feel the, needs, I feel the kids need something to keep them motivated and learning uh, of, of any kind. We as parents are so preoccupied with trying to figure out the current situation. It helps so much to have the video chats, the lessons, the activities to keep them constructively active. I can't say thank you enough for the 4.30 a.m. wake up calls um, because you can't sleep because getting ready, uh, folks, folks that can't sleep for getting ready for their students. Uh, the video chats, the phone calls, the lessons online, and all of the sacrifices the teachers are doing for their students. They are going above and beyond what is needed for our kids during this difficult time. And a special shout out to Mrs. Dubois, Mrs. Koch, Mr. Saturnus, Mrs. Hawk, Ms. Verno, Mr. Gelati uh, for such great video meetings. We can't say enough about how this is essentially, essentially needed. Uh, and that's signed Missy W. So uh, thank you, Missy, for sending that in. Another positive shout out last night on the six o'clock news. I know I was at the, at the board meeting, so I get, did not get a chance to see this live, but I watched the link today. And so last night on KDKA, uh, we had had the opportunity to watch the masked singer competition. Mrs. Hawk, what a fantastic opportunity to, to highlight our children. And so when we start thinking about how do we how do we deliver music instruction and uh, chorus and, and singing instruction in, in this time of online learning and remote learning, teachers are finding new and creative ways to do that. So if you've not seen it, I'll have the link for you. You can click on the KDKA website. Uh, and it was on the six o'clock news last night. Mrs. Hawk, great job. Thank you for what you are doing. So Baldwin Whitehall anniversary celebration as we, as we work through our 80th year, highlighting the people, which we're talking about teacher appreciation, and also highlighting the places. So here we are at Whitehall Elementary School. Uh, Whitehall was constructed in 1955. It was part of that massive expansion that I talked about on Tuesday when the district went from roughly 4,000 students to almost 10,000 students in a very short period of time. This building was renovated in 59 and in 85 and 67, um, 74, I'm sorry, a little bit out of order there, 67, 74, 96, uh, 2014, and also then in 2019. The grade configurations are a little bit unique. And you think about how large this building, it's one of the largest elementary schools in Allegheny County, but it wasn't always an elementary school. It opened as an intermediate school. And so if you remember, we had, uh, when I talked on Tuesday, we had uh, 12 elementary schools back in those days. Uh, this building, along with Wallace, 
were our two inter intermediate schools, and they served ninth and tenth grade, with Baldwin High School only serving eleventh and twelfth grade during those years. When, when Wallace closed in 1980, Whitehall became the only intermediate school, being fed by two elementary schools, um, Harrison. I'm sorry, two middle schools, two middle schools, Harrison Middle School and Painter Middle School. Back in those days, and it was the first time when children across across the district came together as a grade level. So we talk about that happening now in sixth grade, but back in those days, um, once we only had this building, ninth grade was the first time children from across the district came together and really truly were as one. Whitehall currently serves grades two through five. Um, however, as I've said, it's been a K-6, it's been a K-5, and also it's been a three, uh, grades three, four, and five building. Current enrollment's about 800 students, and again, one of the largest elementary schools in Allegheny County. Uh, this is where I attended ninth grade, and so just a quick little story. My, uh, in ninth grade, uh, I was a, a, a little skinny, five foot seven kid from St. Albert's, trying to figure out this huge building on the other side of town because you know, us North Baldwin folks didn't cross 51 back in those days. But my locker was right outside of what is now the nurse's office, but then it was a side entrance to the office. And uh, the assistant principal, we heard me talk about him a different time, Mr. Banky. Mr. George Banky was larger than life about six foot six, um, just a huge guy, would fill a door frame. And I always remember standing at my locker, Mr. Banky would appear out that side door of the office, the door would slam it out, turn around, and just be so intimidated by, by him. I guess that's thinking now a little more relevance when I walk the hallways and, and I see all the kids looking up at me and, and usually the question is, how tall are you? And I, I guess uh, it's kind of playing, playing it forward and, and what comes around goes around, so to speak. But uh, a great building, uh, great people, uh, great history and has served the, the school district for many, many years and will also serve us for many years to come. So shout out today to Whitehall Elementary, the, the students, the staff, and of course the physical building, that's just a mainstay in our district. Uh, food service program update, um, again, just as a reminder, please, when you're picking up the meals, wear your masks, keep, keep yourself safe, and please keep our workers safe. Uh, they are very critical to, to the work that is being done and to continue the service. Uh, serving about a thousand meals a day. And when you do see the agenda, uh, uh, quite a, little, a nice little surprise. Um, when you're picking up meals at the Baldwin Borough Building, please be careful. We have student drivers and young uh, Mason, Mason Wright, third grader, has been picking up his meal in his little uh, ATV, his battery powered ATV. I have a small picture of it here, uh, kind of tough to see, but uh, there's my guy Mason. And uh, you'll see that on my on my attachment today. Thanks to, to Miss Eccles for sending that my way. And uh, Mason, be careful out there. Okay, buddy. Uh, news from Harrisburg, just a couple things. Uh, the legislative update, uh, I've attached a couple things. They've, they've come out recently. You probably may have seen this on the news. Uh, House Speaker uh, Michael Terzai has, has really been uh, active and vocal in the last couple of days, taking a lot of shots at the Pennsylvania Department of Education. Uh, really making it um, a partisan type of thing, uh, and it's and it's difficult. So if I've, I've included a video from from Mr. Terzai, Speaker Terzai, for for uh, your viewing uh, pleasure, if I do say that, uh, and also a letter. And the reason I say it in, in such a way that uh, Speaker Terzai takes shots at teachers in his video, uh, he talks about how. Well, are teachers actually contacting parents? Are they reaching out to children? What are they actually doing? What does the day look like? What do, do, do lessons look like? Is it true curriculum? Um, he takes a lot of shots at district spending. And uh, Speaker Terzai represents the North Hills and, and some districts up there that um, have the benefit of wealth. We're dealing you know, with North Allegheny, Hampton, um, and, and other North Hills school districts um, deal with a higher level of wealth than, than others. And so uh, while he speaks of, of his district spending $19,000 or $17,000 respectively on per pupil spending, um, I had written a letter to Mr. Terzai reminding him of the wonderful things that we are doing in Baldwin Whitehall, and we are the lowest spending district. And that's not necessarily by design. We don't, we don't put badges on our chest saying, hey, let's spend less on our children, but just the nature of how fast we're growing and the nature of our, our tax rolls. Um, we spend approximately fifteen thousand dollars per per child, uh, the lowest in Allegheny County, um, and that's really a, a, a tribute to the work that we're doing. But but it is what it, it's the conditions that we're facing. We're doing wonderful things, 
Uh, these are the means that we have to work with, and we're doing the great things with them. So to take shots at school districts for what they're doing or not doing and not having the whole story, I wanted to make sure that he was aware of the things that we are doing. He talks about kids having dreams, uh, and he's right. Kids do have dreams, and they have dreams of music. They have dreams of sports. They have dreams of academic, um, but we are able to meet those dreams and meet those goals. And Mrs. Hawk, is, as one, shows an example of that uh, in our update today, where we are still working to meet those goals, and we're not leaving those things uh, empty-handed, so to speak. So what we do need moving forward, because we don't know what the future is going to be, we don't know what the fall will be, but here's what we do need. We need collaboration. We need cooperation. We need communication. And um, what we don't need are party politics just for the sake of party politics. Um, on either side of that party, whether the, that's red or blue, we need to work together to figure out what the fall will bring for all of us to make sure that our children are safe, our faculty and teachers are safe, and ultimately our family and community remain safe. And so please, um, um, when I read and watched these things yesterday, um, it evoked a lot of passion, just passion for education and a passion for the, the art and the craft and the science of what we're trying to work through now. If you feel the same way, uh, once you read or, or watch the, the materials, uh, please reach out. While Speaker Terzai does not represent our areas, we have wonderful representatives in, in Quartz and Reedshaw uh, and Miller, uh, Senators in Iavino and Brewster. Uh, please reach out um, and, and let him know the things that we're doing. And that's really why, think about um, why are we focusing so much on the positive? Um, and and so, sometimes there's been a little bit of criticism of why we spend so much on these pauses, these shout outs, these successes. Because we have to tell our story. If we do not tell it, it'll be told for us. And so please help me tell the story. Continue to uh, find the good in what we're doing. And we don't have to look very hard, uh, but find the good in what we are doing. Share those stories amongst yourselves. Share those stories with me. Allow me to share those stories with all of you and continue to talk about the wonderful things that are happening in Baldwin Whitehall and within our community. So a couple of updates for the Baldwin Whitehall program. Last night I did discuss with the school board a school calendar change and you hear, you're probably thinking, here we go again. Uh, but we do know that we have to continue to evolve as we work through these spring closures. Um, I had asked the board for, for their authorization and their approval and they had granted it to, to move the last day of school for all students to be Friday, June 5th. So that would have been the last, and it still is the last day for seniors. But we're asking, and we've uh, approved that calendar change, that the last day for all children will be Friday, June 5th. You may be thinking, well, why? We lost so much time in the middle. Why are we losing more time now? A couple of reasons. First of all, it's been a long spring. Um, so the three and a half days, because normally we would have been done on the following Thursday as a half day. Those three and a half days, I think it's time I think it would be appropriate to to um, to wrap up on that Friday because I want to use that time with the faculty in, in some different ways and trying to optimize the use of that time. We know that the fall is unpredictable. There's a strong chance in the fall that we're going to be disrupted, whether from the beginning or once we come back to school, there may be a disruption that happens uh, once we are back in session. So we want to use those days uh, throughout the course of the summer. We don't have the specific schedule put together yet throughout the course of the summer to really work on professional development, training, increasing the rigor of what we are doing online. While the fourth nine weeks has been been, been wonderful, I think it's really been awesome. You know, think about what happens in the fourth nine weeks. There's a lot of preparation for, for testing. There are a lot of field trips. There are interruptions with different programs. And it's just simply the end of the school year. We've done a great job teaching and working and educating and just connecting with our children. <laughs> Excuse me, but if all that we do in the fall is the same thing that we do now, it won't be acceptable. If we miss time in the fall during the core the core time of instruction, those first two nine weeks is really the, the most core part of, of any academic year. We know that we have to be better, and uh, and that's the time that we want to use to get better, to, to be better, better prepared. Uh, we'll work with um, the retiring teachers this year and, and think of uh, the ways to use their time most productively because they won't be here uh, for next year and also the new teachers that we have to hire for the 2021 school year will plan accordingly for them but um, we will satisfy the contract for all professionals at 192 days though all, all teachers are working the full year and um, 
I feel really good about the ability to take some of this time working with the association and uh, using that time productively to, to try to be as, as better and as best as we can for the kids come this fall. Next item, our proposed budget for uh, for next school year. Uh, Mr. Chirpak and his team presented the budget last night at the, at the school board meeting. Uh, there's a lot of great things, you know, as you as you know, and I've, you've heard me say before, a budget really is a reflection of the of the the values of a school district. Where, where do we want to invest money? Um, that speaks volumes as to um, what a, a school district values is where the money goes. Uh, currently, right now, because of some of the concerns with revenues, uh, we are sitting at a 2.5 million dollar deficit, and that's a proposed budget. Uh, it's only proposed, so we know we have work to do. It's, it's roughly about right around 70 million dollars. We know revenues are down. In that proposed budget, there is no ta uh, local property tax increase uh, that has been recommended at this time. Uh, the final budget will be passed in June, but we're going to continue to work over the next month to bring that gap more in line. So what other things can we look at? Where, where can we uh, trim additional? Where can we maybe increase revenues? And so while we're not done by any stretch of the imagination, there's been lots of work up to this point and we'll continue to to get those numbers where we feel that they can be acceptable. I mean, ultimately, the goal is a balanced budget. Uh, we know that this year that will be very challenging just knowing that the revenue streams uh, are significantly down. Let me jump over to questions. Just uh, quickly, I was here earlier and there were just a couple. Um, Missy, thank you for posting your, uh, your comments here as well, uh, the ones that I read earlier about our sixth grade team and the programming at the middle school, uh, really. These are the positive stories we have to tell. Uh, again, our, we should write our story. We should not allow anyone to write it for us. Well, there's a question about locks being cut off the lockers uh, for the student items. Um, and if there was a chance to have homerooms get combinations so they don't have to be cut. Um, I know that, that um, I've seen that personally, even with uh, my own child's teachers pushing things out as far as trying to collect that information. So. Um, please reach out to your homeroom teacher. If they've not reached out to you, reach out to them. Um, we're going through the process now of, of gathering all the, the items for the children to make sure that we can get those in an organized manner for, for distribution later this this month. Uh, but please, um, if you've not, if they've not reached out to you, reach out to them. If there's anything we can do, our desire is not to cut any locks off. If we have the combinations, then by all means, we don't want to increase that, that cost or just to lose a, a lock that might be somewhat special to a child. Um, sorry if these questions have been previously asked, but can you reiter reiterate about how the yearbooks will be distributed and uh, the high school scheduling? So I do know that the high school scheduling, I got some really positive feedback about scheduling yesterday, uh, just this morning, that scheduling processes were happening uh, with the counselors over the last uh, couple of days, especially yesterday. Um, and so there will be uh, contact coming out to you uh, if it's not already happened, it'll be happening in, in the very, very near future. Um, I had pushed out a, a message to Mr. Waterk at the high school and uh, about the yearbooks. And let me just take a, a moment here to, to look at his response. So the yearbooks are, um, the yearbooks will be in later this week, I'm sorry, later this month, about the third week of May. We just need to look at how we can safely get the yearbooks uh, in the hands of children, not leaving them in an unlocked or, or unmonitored space. They're valuable. They're very expensive. People paid a lot of money to get those. And so, Mr. Water, thank you uh, for just pushing this out and just kind of, kind of giving us a timeline. So they're not on site yet. Uh, we expect those in about a week or two. Uh, he'll give us a, head, a heads up once the truck gets here. Uh, we'll have to look to how to unpack and organize them in a very um, orderly manner. And then hopefully by that same time, we will be more in line with um, knowing how to get the rest of the students belongings back to them. So I'm um, hang tight, but Mr. Water, thanks for uh, the, the the heads up on that. Um, and I, in, in just the first part of that, um, please don't apologize for asking questions more than once. Um, I heard I heard someone say, I don't know who it was, but but years ago I heard heard the line, that uh, it may be the fifth time, hundredth time that, that I'm answering the same question, but it may, it's probably the first time that you've asked it. And so if you don't know the answer uh, to your question, ask it. And then there's, there's, no, there's no harm uh, in doing that more than once. Uh, are schools opening next year for the new seniors? Well, I hope so. I, I really do hope so. Uh, we hope that we're opening for all students, um, but um, of 
course, the senior year is something special. Uh, I have an upcoming senior who's scheduled and had contact, who had to contact guidance counselors numerous, numerous times to get classes entered. Um, after the first day of that, has has that made scheduling issues more clear for other classes that may be entered? Um, I know that I got some really positive feedback yesterday. So whether there's been some hiccups in the process, uh, but I got some really positive feedback yesterday about uh, the ease in which scheduling was happening. And so as we all work through this, just be, play, just be patient. We, we will get there. Um, and, the, and the next question is a, a shout out to Ms. Babick uh, for being helpful with the schedule yesterday and uh, for the daughters, I'm, I'm assuming, the upcoming senior year. Uh, refunds for the history trip. Mr. Shaner has been working through, through all of that at the middle school. Uh, as a matter of fact, just thinking about the end of year trips and things that were scheduled, the, the different events. We had a great meeting yesterday morning uh, with all the administrators. I know while we've talked, hold on, grab my paperwork here. Uh, while we've talked about uh, things like commencements, there are so many other end of year planning uh, celebrations that, that are, are in jeopardy and, and we need to think differently about that. So please know that I talked to all five building principals uh, on a conference call yesterday morning. Um, every single one of us, them, are very interested and eager to do um, online, I'm sorry, uh, either virtual or, or in-person types of events, whether that's uh, pre-K, K, all the way through uh, high school types of events. And so uh, more will be coming out from each of, the, each of those folks um, and including answering questions like some of these trips that were scheduled. Because uh, we know while seniors have been a lot of the conversation, even something like eighth grade year where we have history trip, camp souls, eighth grade dance, um, I spent 10 years at the middle school and there's not a, a more active, exciting time anywhere than eighth grade students in the spring. I'm sure eighth grade parents, I'm sure you would might, might, might want to use different words than active and, and exciting to describe what springs are like, the spring is like for your kids, uh, but we'll leave it at, as exciting and active. How about that? Um, any updates on the ABC Mouse access building updates? So families want to keep the access I don't know, have any access or uh, update on that, but let me find out and uh, we can go from there. I do want to finish this morning with, with a story. And so if the little ones are around, uh, please grab them and uh, bring them to the computer. Uh, a special uh, shout out and, and thank you to um, a great friend of, of mine and the family, uh, Miss, Mrs. Robin Wessling. Uh, Robin had shared the st story with me, a student book, um, it's titled, uh, when the World Turned Upside Down by Jessica Heckcroft. Uh, Jessica is author and, and a co-worker of Robin's. Uh, they work at the Baldwin Community Preschool program right down the street. Uh, as Robin says, she's truly one of the sweetest and most caring teachers. Uh, she's been with us about seven years, has worked with children for the past 20, including working with special needs children uh, for several years. She is a mom of four, writes children's stories as a hobby that began 20 some years ago. Her son Thomas is the illustrator. He's 19. He's going to school for graphic design. Um, this is her first published collaboration. Uh, her inspiration for the book was her students. Uh, she wanted to help them understand and make sense of what is going on in the world around them. And I'm uh, so proud to call her a coworker and friend. So um, hopefully kids, the, the, some of the young ones are up and we can we can share. So when the world when the world turned upside down, so fitting I'm sitting, standing in the library and being able to read by Jessica Jessica Heckbra. I know I don't know what happened. It just started one day. It seemed as though things just all went away. We were going to school, learning and playing. Then whispers began. The grown-ups were saying. We had to stop going to school this one day, and that's all, and that's when it all started fading away. We had to stay home, no playing with friends. It seemed no one knew when this world, when this would all end. I'm still not sure why I can't see everyone. Some people are sick. This is no time for fun. I can't even go to the park anymore. There's tape around the playgrounds and many locked doors. When I've been outside, I have seen some weird things. Masks are on faces like ninjas in spring. There are some things, though, that I really don't mind. Now it seems that our family has all kinds of time.
Mommy plays games and is teaching us things. Daddy's pretending that he is our king. And although I can only see Grammy by chat, she's learning how to use the internet. The internet. Just imagine that. Other wondrous things are occurring. People have slowed down. No longer hurrying. Kindness is showing up all over the place. People are giving and praying for grace. If someone has none, another will give. Maybe this was the way we are supposed to live. And you know, those masks at first may seem scary, but right underneath them are people who are caring. And some of them are doing the most important job of all. They're taking care of others and answering God's call. To help all the people who need the most care they're so very special. We're thankful they're there. So although I miss my teachers and all of my friends too, I know this is best. It's what we had to do. I know to be good for my mother and father. And I guess I'll try to be nice to my brothers. I bet that we'll all try to be nicer right now. We're learning together and figuring out how. And when I say my prayers at the end of the night, I'm sure to ask God for happiness and light. Who would have known when all this began what could have started one day in our land? But we'll all be okay. Breathe a little, fresh, a little fresher air, and before we know it, normal life will be there. the end. Jessica, thank you for, for writing. Thank you for sharing, Robin. Um, it is difficult. It's, it's a strange time. Little ones are trying to figure out why so much has been taken away. And as you've heard me say before, um, while it's easy to focus on the things that are gone, uh, it's, it's also uh, really important to focus on the things that are, that are here. So my positive send-offs today, a few inspirational quotes about teaching. And I have those listed on the agenda. I'd like to share a couple. Um, and the first one, if kids come to us from strong, healthy, functioning families, it makes our job easier. If they do not come from us, come to us from strong, healthy, functioning families, it makes our job more important. And that's from Barbara Colorose. What we want to, is to see a child in pursuit of knowledge and not knowledge in pursuit of the child. And George Bernard, George Bernard Shaw. This one, of course, is on most refrigerators. And students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And then from Dan Rather, the dream begins most of the time with a teacher who believes in you, who tugs and pushes and leads you onto the next plateau, and sometimes poking you with a sharp stick called the truth. And so with that, please have a wonderful weekend. Uh, continue to stay safe, be kind, and wear your mask. Thank you.